Welcome to Good Mythical More. Does the wheel scare you a little bit? Hanging out with the dog. Oh, this is going to be complicated. Two-man wave. It's going to be a four-man. You, did you get Barbara to do it? Get Barbara to do it. Here it comes, Link. Here it comes. Here it comes. Ah! Oh! <laughs> it's coming back around. It's coming back around, but it's coming from your side. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Barbara, you're doing such a good job. She barks every time. Every do it time again. the wave comes. Does she bark? Okay, here we go. Here it comes again. <laughs> That's too early. Okay. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. No. Woo! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Barbara, you're so talented. Well, she's trying. Well, you know, Jade's talented too. Yeah. Well, just get her to do something. She can sit in my lap for like a long time. Okay, I'm going to hand Barbara off for a little bit because we're going to make something very special for oh, you. Gonna you're going to love it. We're going to make you guys some too treats. Restless. Look at that. We're making hot dogs for dogs. So, oh yeah, you like the idea of doing that? You can let it okay. run around if you want. Okay. All right, so we'll make the dogs and then we'll feed it to the dogs. Um,. So we're gonna start. With, oh, okay, we've got wilderness blend. This is all. This is this is um, bona fide dog food cheese. It's not just cheese whiz. This is stuff that you put in like a one of those Kong toys so that they go nuts over it. This is venison holiday stew. I might have to steal a little bit of that for myself. <laughs> now, um, as we make this, I just want to say, Chris Sullivan was a great guest, what a man. Guy. So what cool! So cool to meet him. He was like, I love it when a guest comes in and they they like fully commit to being on the show and like, yes, you know, it's like, hey, we're gonna you're gonna pour hot wax on us, then you're gonna sniff it, and like, he was ready, man. It he was, was like he'd been waiting for that all his life. He was hilarious, wasn't he? And then, ooh, this is this is a chewy chewy. Put that in there. Um, mm, I'm gonna and I'm of course, hold off on that. he. He was Taserface in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, one of my favorite oh my Marvel movies. Um, but, Rhett, I want you, I just think this is the best opportunity for them to, for you to tell them your Taserface story. I mean, because it's, it's pretty crazy. And I, I've just been thinking about, are, are the Mythical Beasts ever going to hear it? I think this is a good opportunity. I... You made a decision not to say anything to Chris, and I agreed that that would be weird. I'm glad you didn't bring it up. Yeah, I didn't want to bring it up with him, but I want you to tell the story of how there was an actual possibility that Rhett could have been Taserface. Seriously. Um, you want me to there tell were the story? There, 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 tell it. Okay. I'm going to put this on so, there. So, we got a call through uh, one of our representatives... And uh, look at Barbara; she's, she's she's ready for this, man. And uh, they said that the uh, the casting director of like Marvel's casting director is a fan of you guys, and uh, she would really like you to read for a part in up, the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy two movie. Now, typically we don't do this. Typically we don't we don't go on auditions. We don't do things separately from each other. We're very very busier than we can possibly ever be just doing the things that we do together. And these things can be a distraction from the stuff that we're doing as a duo. So we typically just don't do that. But it was like, okay, this is this is a this is a really cool thing. I should at least go to the audition, if not just to learn what it's like to go to a to a real audition. Well, we had, we had to, never done before. We had to have a discussion, right? Because it was like, you know, I was like, well, who do they want me to be? <laughs> but it, you know, you can't think like that. But in terms of the things that we're going to commit to... Look at Barbara. Look at her. Oh, she, she, she's just grabbing... Oh, we didn't even put an actual hot dog. Just give her a hot dog. Well, well, no, give her no, that. I'm, I want to give her the whole... Th I, want, I, I want to tell the story. Here, I'll, I, I'll give her a little bite. Here. You can cut... She'll just... just I don't want her to eat the whole thing because, you know, it can mess them up when they're not... When they get new food. Where they're not used to it. Yeah, I'm going to give her a little bit more and then I'm... Okay, I'm, I'll hold her over a little, a little bit of this. So, I was like... I don't know what this would mean in terms of like uh, the th the projects that we're going to work on and how much time commitment it is, but I just so I di I didn't want to be the one to say, hey, Jay no. is so dainty. It's a, if I put Barbara up here, you have no idea how quickly this hot dog would be eaten, and Jay's like licking. Put her up like, here. Lick. Let's see. Oh, she just dropped a piece. Okay, here, Barbara. there's more up here. Come show them how a dog's supposed to behave. Oh. <laughs> 
Now, I don't let Jade eat off the table or eat food from the table, so she's kind of freaking out right now. She's like, when am I going to get in trouble for this? <laughs> oh, look, she's going straight for... No, 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 don't go for the tray. This is your thing right here. So anyway, I was like, you got to go for it just to see what it would be like. You can't say no before you even know if there's an opportunity. Hot, hot, oh. And then there's a decision okay, later. She just wants a hot dog. She just wants a hot dog. Okay, there we go. Eat the whole thing. There you go. Um, so you so you went in for an audition. Or what did they do? They emailed you a s sides, right? They emailed me sides, and uh, of so, course it was like... So what? A, no, that no, is a no. segment of the actual script. They didn't email me sides. They sent me uh, an email that had a password to go in and look at sides that had like stuff written all over them, because this is like spoiler, big-time spoiler stuff, right? So I knew like... So it was I knew all that was going to happen to Taserface by just reading these sides. And it so was three pages or four pages of the script, and then there was stuff marked out, like redacted that... Yeah, and it was, it was the scene where the raccoon... Rocket. Rocket is just being a jerk to him, making fun of his name. Right, and, and, and they don't give you any. They don't give you any any information. It was just it was written like the guy was either a redneck or like a pirate. Like the way his grammar was like very right. incorrect and stuff. And so like I just so I was like I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna do my best. To do this. So I. It so, literally said in the script that there was a point where he was like spitting. Oh yeah. Out of his mouth, like he got so worked up. It says in the script that spits flying out of his mouth, and then. When I watched the scene in the movie, spit was flying out right. of his mouth. And I was like, whoa, I had so, a scoop on this. So I go in, well, first of all, I, I, I talked to my wife about it and I like worked, I had like this redneck character because I knew that he was, a, he was like a, uh, he was on the same team with Merle, who played, what, what's his, we call him Merle because he's from The Walking Dead, but right. uh, Michael, what's his name? And, um, and so I was like, I could kind of do that thing. But then I also had this like cockney pirate thing and they were both very intense and I was doing it for my wife. And then I called up our friend Tony, who's a legitimate like Emmy award winning actor. And I was like, I've never been to an audition before. Just, you know, I, and I like read, read, the, read it to him over the phone. And he like gave me a couple of pointers or whatever. So then I go into the audition and uh, again, this is, we've been in this business for a long time, but because we just do things that we do, we don't, we, like traditional way that Hollywood works is just something we just don't have any appreciation for. But it's interesting because any actor that would go in for that audition would probably be nervous about it. I mean, that's a, that's a big part. I mean, in a freaking, the biggest Marvel movie that would come out in that time period. You and know? I had no idea what to expect, but it was this, uh, the, the casting director in a room, very small room with like one assistant, and uh, I like walked in there, and she was like, "Got any questions?" I was like, "No." And uh, she said, like, "Okay, go for it." And so then, the dude in the chair is playing the raccoon, Rocket. And uh, you've seen the movies, yeah. I, I like to call him the raccoon. And uh, and I went into it, and I went in hard. I, ch I chose the pirate character. <laughs> I spit all over this dude. You spit all over him? Yeah, I got up in his face. I really, really went for it. And I was, and I was like, I had no idea how this went. And then she was like, "Wow, this is your first audition." And I was like, "She's just BSing me. I, she's just saying this because she, because her kids are fans. That's how we got. That's how I got into this room." And she was like, "You want to do it one more time?" And I was like, "Okay, sure." I did it, and I went even bigger. And she was like, "Okay, thanks." And so then, and then you left, and I went in. Yeah. For for the rocket part. So, but no, but what we did it, say. They thought about replacing. Um, but what we did say is, I I said I don't want to do this if we can't make it a Rhett and Link thing. Like you I did, made it I, complicated. I did, well, so anyway, so my manager calls us back, like two days later, <coughs> and he's like, James Gunn is the director, right? <coughs> yeah. He's like, James Gunn loves you. <coughs> and I was like, oh crap. <laughs> and I was like, "This is this could be a problem." So give give her some more food. Give but her, there was a callback. Just back. part of a hot dog. No, there wasn't a there wasn't a callback. About some of that. And too. they said, "But you would have to shoot in Atlanta for four months." Well, let, and let's clarify, you weren't offered. It the wasn't part. no. What, what specifically? What I was told, and this is the this is the strange thing is, that, and I'm not going to say who it was. They were like, w "They've narrowed it down to you and two other people." Interestingly, they didn't mention Chris at the time, and so, but I but I knew the other two actors, and uh, but then I was like, when they, then then I was like, there's no way we can do this. 
it's gonna be four months in Atlanta. We talked about how can, is there some way that like Link could we could be we could do this together? And then they were like, they were like as soon as we threw any sort of wrench into it, they were like, guys, we can't we can't accommodate this, uh, which we totally understood. I'm so, the reason um, that you weren't in the. No, but that doesn't mean that I would have gotten the part. It just means that there was a there was a legitimate chance that I could have gotten the part if we had said that we I was actually available to do it. Uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna say that. To, first of all, because I have no idea what oh, the no. reality of it was, and. It, he did an incredible job. How do, you, how do you feel about the fact that he did it and you didn't do it? I mean, I think I would have been a little bit better, but oh no, of course I would. No, uh, judging by even getting to know him here and like how great of a score was, I'm, I'm super glad that he got it. Yeah. Um, not just so that we can continue to do other things. And I would have never told that story other than the fact that we had Taserface himself on the show. So, there you go. <laughs>